now, and we are talking about the foundations of an author platform. We've got so much goodness. Um, we are going through our roadmap here. Last week, we talked about the manuscript. Yesterday, we dove into the book production, um, but we're going to take a slight detour, detour to talk about the plan, the marketing plan, getting our author foundation set before we actually publish the book. We are going through this massive checklist of things to keep us organized and sorted. And if you're seeing us on Facebook and you want to be in the Zoom room with us, click the Zoom link and that will get you into the Zoom room. If you're finding us and you're like, I want to join, paperravenbooks.com slash nano will get you plugged into the challenge so we can send you the links for everything and all the resources. Um, I'm curious, for those of us in the Zoom room, uh, any insights, anything that you have taken away from our time together so far that has been helpful? I know yesterday we went into a lot about um, like the book publishing process and we kind of got into the weeds about titles, subtitles, keywords, categories, um, and a brief blow by blow of sort of like Amazon KDP and Ingram Spark. Um, but yeah, any any insights or anything that you've learned so far that you're like, oh, I'm glad I I'm glad that Morgan shared that that bit, that nugget. Any takeaways? Just so that as I'm sharing this again in the future, I know what has landed with folks. That would be super helpful. Yeah, Sharon said the keywords and categories were something I wanted to know more about. It is a deep dive into keywords and categories. Yes. Yep. Good. Margaret said, I loved yesterday. Um, it was a good look at the publishing process. Actually, said the best look at the publishing process. I appreciate that. Hopefully, we're putting together some pieces that you might have gotten kind of scattered around on various, you know, um, YouTube shows or freebies or conversations. And hopefully we're kind of pulling everything together into one process. Right, let me put that on silent real quick. Um, yep, good. Calvin said, I set up my Google doc of the publishing info last night, keeping everything in one spot. Love it. Yes, the checklist has been good. Amazing. Uh, publishing name, EIN, registering um, with the Secretary of State. I know the details, the details. Yep, Vanessa says learning about KDP. So good, good, good. All right, I'm glad. Thank you for that. That is very helpful. All righty. Today, we are we got we've gotten about as far as you know we've we've talked about gathering the publishing information, designing the book cover and interior, kind of organizing those files. But before we publish. We don't want to do this yet. Before we publish, it's very important. I can, you almost want to imagine like a little arrow here that's like oh, it takes us to the beginning over here, which is author website freebie email list. We need this actually set up before we publish, and I'll share with you why. Um, and then we're going to be uh, in the checklist. So if you want the resources, they are in the same place as they normally are, which is uh, paperravenbooks.com slash nano dash resources. Let me type that in for us. Paperravenbooks.com slash nano dash resources. Spelled properly is required for the link to work. All right, and I'll pop that in the chat for us. And that will bring you to our private kind of author space. This part is actually public. <laughs> I say private because it's not Facebook. It's not like a social media thing. It is our little corner of the internet where we um, have, you know, our conversations with writers and authors and folks who are doing this, this book publishing thing. And so this area is all open to the public. So anyone's welcome. Come on in, introduce yourself. We do live events here. We, when we do the live events that are open to the public, we put our recordings and resources over here. We have some other resources um, like the Streamlined Self-Publishing Guide, which um, is kind of an overview walkthrough of a lot of the resources we're talking about here. Tools recommend, links out to the Professional Book Editors Association. Um, you can ask questions, you can share wins. All that is kind of open for everybody. And our resources and um, chat about our live events is here. We're in day eight, but if you scroll down, you'll notice that you can catch everything that's happened so far um, from the book idea matrix to power writing and flow state triggers and sketching a narrative arc and reverse outlines 
and publishing roadmap and checklist and publishing info and design. And now we're on to author platform foundations. And um, let me actually, I should, uh, maybe I'll just use this because it's here and available. So a lot of times when people talk about selling books and growing an author platform, what they're thinking about is, or, or talking indirectly about is social media following, maybe email list, maybe you've thought about, you know, putting videos on YouTube or TikTok or starting a podcast or something like that. And so because publishers have started to put an emphasis on author platform, uh, it has put a bit of pressure on the author community to sort of say, well, how do I grow my platform? And so people start talking very quickly about, you know, posting on social media and, um, and growing followers over there. I would suggest that particularly when we're talking about fiction or memoir, although the same is true for nonfiction, um, sometimes it can feel a little bit like a cart before the horse. You know, how do I, in fact, let me come back to, to this while we're talking at a, at a broad level. You know, the question is, well, how do I grow a platform talking about my fiction if I don't have my even my first fiction book out like what am I putting on social media am I posting about the writing life and research that I'm doing and pieces that I'm writing it feels a little bit cart before the horse uh, whereas what I hope to show you today is that we can actually use our books to grow an initial email list and once we have you know the seeds of an email list now, anything that we do on social media to grow a social media presence, people will see, ah, they have a book, they'll get your book, the book will help to grow the email list. So we create a bit of a, you know, a self-feeding loop so that anything we do to promote the book, you know, grows our email list. And we can also use our email list to let people know that we're on social media, anything that we do on social media reminds people that we have a book. And so we create a little bit of this uh, kind of ecosystem where regardless of when people find us uh, or where people find us, they'll be able to get to another part of our ecosystem. And so how we do this mechanically is we put what's called a freebie or a reader magnet inside the book. And um Nonfiction has been doing this for many, many years, right? Nonfiction, uh, especially in the self-published world, people will put a checklist or a guide or a meditation or a companion course or a companion, you know, printable workbook or something like that inside the book. And they'll say, go to the website to get these additional resources. Well, fiction still wants to be able to link people to a website um, and in fact, you'll often see people just dropping links inside of the book to their website or to the social media, but it doesn't have the same call to action. It doesn't have the same uh, reason to go to the author's website and and uh, sign up for their newsletter um, that those nonfiction examples uh, are that I that I shared with you. And so partly this is because of the tension with traditional publishers. So on Friday, we actually started this conversation about uh, growing your author email list. And we use the example, my daughter happens to have left this book in, in my office, uh, but this is a traditionally published book, Simon Schuster. And at the end of a traditionally published book, you'll notice that um, perhaps they offer a preview to the next book, right? Um, but they go ahead and just provide the preview to the next book, hoping that you'll just buy, uh, buy the next book. Or if they offer any links, it is usually links to other books by the publisher. Um, let me just double check. I think this will have it. Yeah, so um, this one links to other Holly Black books, which is very nice. But of course, these are Holly Black books that were published by this publisher. 
Um, but sometimes they will also just link to other books. Sorry, I should have pulled more examples. Other books that the publisher has published. And so for fiction, we get a little bit of um, the runaround because, <laughs> you know, at the end of our novel, our publisher is either giving away the, the preview of the next book, hoping that the person just buys the next book, the reader just buys the next book, or the publisher is just putting links or, or advertisements for other books that the publisher will profit from. But what about us as the author? Like, how do we get people to join our email list or, um, or uh, follow us on social media? So that is something that has opened up once we started exploring self-publishing. There's been a much bigger movement in the indie publishing world for fictional authors to say, okay, let's figure out how we bring people from the pages of our books to our email list and our social media. So let me give you some examples. For instance, uh, this is ML Dunker's book, uh, the first book in the series, A Gift of the Stars. And when you read her book at the very end, in fact, let me back up. So this is just what it looks like in her book. So if I were reading this on a Kindle, you know, then I would only see a portion of this because I'm looking at it in the cloud reader on my desktop. It's showing both pages at the same time. So I'm reading, I'm getting to the end of the book here. These are the last paragraphs in book one. And then she provides just a hint of book two. Like, here we go. Wait, we got one, two, three, four, five paragraphs kind of of book two, just to give you that little bit of the taste. And then she says, I have a preview of the next book. You know, I've, you, could even, you could even say I have an expanded preview. I have a, you know, an exclusive expanded preview of the next book. And it's inviting people to go to her website and sign up right here. And the call to action is get preview. So you'll notice this link right here is her website domain, mldunker.com slash book two preview and then um it's a very clear what you do on this page you provide your name and you provide your email and you get that preview and it confirms here here's you know the cover for book two and um and so that's a really uh, nice way to to bring people into your email list uh, another example this is Nate Wagner's book. Uh, the first book of the series is Warriors of the Forgotten Way. And at the end of the book, so again, I'm reading this on my Kindle on my laptop. Uh, we've got, you know, the end of the book. We've got some references, acknowledgments about the author. And then here we go. Sneak peek. You know, follow Cade's quest for freedom. And, it, you know, for the title of book two, want a free sneak, sneak peek, click this link. And again, that lands you right on his website. So he chose for his website to be the book title, the Samurai Cowboys. I'm sorry, the series title, the Samurai's, Samurai Cowboys, uh, dot com slash Way of the Viper with dashes between them. And he just opted for email. Um, technically speaking, if you have both name and email as your opt-in, you're going to get fewer conversions for whatever reason. If there's only one blank to fill out, people are more likely to fill it out. <laughs> so if you only ask for the email, you are you will have a slightly higher percentage of people um, who come to this page and provide their email. Uh, but regardless, so we've got a similar thing here. It's a picture of the next book. It's a little bit of a description of the next book and um, put in your email here if you want to get the preview of this next book. The reason why this works, oh, and I should say, Nate just told me, so he he just put this up um, a, a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. And he said that with the marketing efforts that he is doing for book one, he's on TikTok, for instance, he has gotten 450 subscribers through this page. 450 subscribers just through this page because he's out there. He's promoting book one. He's talking about Warriors of the Forgotten Way. People are reading book one. They get to the end. They want the preview. 
they land on this page and this is how we're growing an email list. And so once you have this set up inside of your book, um, any additional efforts that you do to uh, promote your book, you will end up with, with email subscribers because you put this mechanism inside your book. Because before you published it, you put this page in here. Now this page, I wish it was super, <laughs> it's not complicated to set up, but it does require a series of steps to actually set up. So let's um, go through that checklist real quick. Awesome. Oh, yay. John said he wrote 1400 words yesterday. Amazing. What did I call it? Master checklist. Here we go. Yep. And John says, I put bookmarks that I um, wrote my business cards in my books. Also started putting a preview of my next book at the back of the book. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of people get very um, indecisive. Like, should I put the preview you know, should I just print it in the back of the book? Should I, you know, uh, ask them to join my email list? I do like how uh, ML Dunker has done it, where she does have just a very brief preview of book two. And then says, I, again, I think we could say, you know, I have an extended preview of the next book. And then the, the, the free preview that you send via email, that could be, you know, a chapter or a couple of chapters something like that. Um, so that way you can kind of get the best of both worlds. All right. So where's my checklist? Sorry. All right. Here we are in our checklist. Uh, we had gone through yesterday organizing, kind of talking about getting your files ready for KDP and for Ingram Spark. So you can go back to yesterday if you want more on that. And then here it says, now jump to the plan and set up the branding and marketing pieces that you'll need for an optimized book launch. Then we'll come back to publish the book. All right. And for anyone who is like, wait, I don't have the checklist. Remember it's paperravenbooks.com slash nano dash resources. That actually gets you to everything. Um, all resources are here. Plus this is where replays and all of that are going as well. So you can get fully caught up. Alrighty. Oh no, I went to the back, back to the beginning. Hold on. We're going to scroll through all, look at all the things you've already done. Yay. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. We've jumped to the first major milestone in the plan, which is our author website freebie and email list. So we're going to choose. Okay. Awesome. Martha. Yep. No problem. We're going to choose your website domain. And my recommendation is, um, one of two options for your website domain. I'll offer a third with a caveat. <laughs> for most of us, it's gonna be one of two options. One is your author name. Your author name, um, especially if you write memoir or if you are planning to write multiple books, potentially even multiple series. You're sort of like, I wanna be writing for the next 10 plus years of my life, <laughs> you're probably going to end up with quite a few books. So your author name can be the umbrella for all of your different books, all of your different series. That's a really easy classic one. You can do um, like mldunker.com. Um, obviously, ML is not her given name that her parents, you know, and, and partner call her. Um, but that's her author name, right? So that's what she's using across all of her um, platforms is M period L period space Dunker. So she's got that in her Google Doc. That's what uh, that's what is everywhere. And then for the website domain, ML Dunker without additional periods because for the most part we don't we try not to put in extra periods or hyphens in domain names. So that's a, that's an easy one. The second option for most of us, if we have a series that we we just love this series, we are going to want to be, you know, talking about this series and writing in this series for the foreseeable future. It is also fine to do the series title. So Nate has done the samurai as his, as his domain. Um, but Nate also has, he actually has his own like, um, creative branding company 
So he has a different website for that, which links to here. So he actually does have an umbrella website. I would lean towards your author name. If you, if you ask me, okay, Morgan, I've got to choose one, which would you choose? I would tend to lean toward your author name because it has the, has the most longevity uh, for your author career. Now I said there would be a third option and that is for folks. If you have like a business name that you are going to publish many books under that business name. For instance, Sabine has Thinking Dog Press. So she has several series underneath Thinking Dog Press. That's her LLC. Um, who else was I thinking of that has, oh, I was just talking with Sue uh, last week and she uh, has sort of like book coaching services and her memoir all under a business name. So that business name is, is her domain. Um, my favorite, although I realize this is hypocritical because I don't have I, I have morgangistmcdonald.com, but I don't do anything with it. <laughs> I, I do everything under my LLC. I do everything under paperravenbooks.com. Um, but for most of us, I really like your author name.com. And it can, it can be hard to get the .com. You could go for the .co if the .co is available. I would not recommend .net. .net sounds like from the 90s. <laughs> or as my kids say, that's from the 1900s. <laughs> when they're referencing anything from the from like 1990s, they're like, "Well, mom, that was the 1900s." <laughs> like, okay, I get it, Gen Alpha. <laughs> but anyway, so .net is from the 1900s, <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend .net. Um, however, if you can play with your author name, first initials like Joanna Penn has uh, JF Penn for instance, or you can add um, author or rights or something like that to it. Um, you can add a middle name, you can add a middle initial, uh, but author name, I love, I love the author name. Set up a one page author website. And the reason why I specify one page is because that's the perfect starting point, <laughs> right? We don't need to get all in a, you know, up, up in a tizzy about blogs and events and hooking up social media and all the things. It's like, we really just need one page to start with. And I think uh, the two that I pulled, I think they have expanded their websites by now, but let me look at the, the homepage is essentially what we need here, where it's like, you've got your, sorry, she's got a pop-up in here too. You've got the book cover, you've got a description of the book, a link to buy the book and a little bit about the author, right? So here's a picture that sort of represents ML Dunker as an author and then the story of ML Dunker and just a little bit about her as an author and you can link to your social media if you want. And then she does, she's expanded this as she's published more and more books. She's expanded it to include more books and then the ability to get on the email list. I would say even right here, you could offer something a little bit more enticing, like the preview, exclusive preview of book one, or um, a short story or a backstory or a free book or something like that. But this is all you need, right? You need a book cover coming soon if it's not out yet, um, and a, a link to, to buy it or get on the book launch team. We'll talk about that here in a second. And then a little bit about you social media if you want, and a place to hop on the email list. That's it. One page is good. We don't need anything else. And that can that can, lay, that can last you for a long time. Uh, Providence said, if offering a free book, does it need to be a book that's not published? If, you, if it's published by a publisher, the publisher technically has the license for that content. So you probably would not be able to do it if a publisher had it already. But if it's your book, you can do whatever you want with your book. Yeah, you can offer it for free. Why not? Um, when we offer our preview chapters to a reader, do you recommend using book funnel uh, to send it to them? I just send it as a PDF. Yeah, it's just simplest. I We've experimented with book funnel. There's just a little bit too much friction. Because um, when book funnel, and I think I even have the emails, like I did it with 
uh, as a test from Joanna Penn's, she offers books through book funnel and things like that. There's just a little bit of friction to get the book like onto your e-reader device. Um, so most people like they'll just pull up a PDF and they'll just read it on their phone straight from their email. So we, uh, when they join the email list, we have the email service provider automatically send out an email with the PDF, either uh, the PDF attached, if that's possible, or just a link to the PDF. And so many of the smartphones and tablets and all that sort of thing, um, you can read a PDF on your smart device just as easily as anything else. So that tends to work just fine. Yep. And Casey says, I'm using Casey Cooper author slash bard. <laughs> my real name is also a serial murderer in California. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Casey, that is unfortunate. <laughs> you could consider adding a middle initial or a middle name or something like that. But yeah. Um, and Casey Cooper is two other people as well as a known session musician drummer and English trashy reality TV star. It's true. I mean, there are so many Morgan McDonald's that, I mean, that's why I've always, ever since I got married and became Morgan McDonald, I've used Gist in my name as my professional name. So you'll always hear me say Morgan Gist McDonald, just to differentiate from the thousands of others, <laughs> Morgan McDonald's out there, those Scottish, <laughs> Scottish folks really like the name Morgan. Okay. Um, page, you know, when you have it, a 3D mock-up of the book description, author bio, that's the page. And then you'll set up a hidden page on the website for a reader magnet. So you're just creating another page. It's not linked from the main website. So uh, you'll notice that when ML Dunker linked us to get the exclusive preview, it actually goes to a page that uh, doesn't exist in her navigation, if that makes sense. It's a page on the same website. It's mldunker.com. Um, and uh, the only way to get to this page is to have uh, clicked it here. And so um, this page just exists kind of on its own. You want to set up your email service provider. MailerLite is really easy to get started with. And I believe it still has a free version up to a number of subscribers. So um, that's a really good, uh, easy kind of um, setup. And then you'll want to integrate that hidden page with the email service provider to deliver the reader magnet to a new subscriber automatically. So this piece of code actually comes from Mailer Lite. So you'll notice when you go to day eight, uh, if you click see more here, these are the easiest to set up. Wix is great for a website build. Um, it has a lot of things sort of uh, that come with it already and it's visual so you can select an element I uh, want an image and you can move it around on the page and uh, the way that you you set it up in the preview when you click publish that's how it looks so that's great it's called what you what you see is what you get um, and so there's no you don't need to know any code or html or anything like that mailer light is the email service provider that stores email addresses and is responsible, like you set up automations so that when someone provides their email address, it can send emails automatically. So you actually get a little piece of code from MailerLite, you put it into your Wix website. And so this is actually, as soon as I put my name and email in here and I click submit, my information goes to MailerLite. It's stored on a list and MailerLite says, ah, new subscriber send them the free things and then the free preview. So we have to sort of hook up those technical bits. Um, and so, and then we wanna send a, an autoresponder, set up an autoresponder that will ask for reviews as well. So the benefit of having a freebie like this is you know if someone landed on this page and provided their name and email address, that they very likely read book one. So now you can pretty confidently follow up and say, you know, let's say a week later, say, hey, I hope you enjoyed book one. Would you mind um, leaving a review for the book? Here's a link to leave a review. And a few weeks after that, hey, you know, um, if you didn't get a chance to leave a review, really appreciate it if you could 
click right here and leave a review. And so it just, it just prompts people to leave a review. And so now we're doing two things. We're getting two major benefits from setting this system up. One, we're growing our email list. Two, we are asking for reviews on a consistent basis. And so um, people always ask, you know, I'll, I'll shameless plug here. Um, here's my book. People always ask, well, how did you get, you know, 1800 reviews on your book is because I have this set up. You can get my audio book for free inside my book. And then you're going to get emails asking you to leave a review on my book. <laughs> and so people come back and they leave a review. Um, so that's what we recommend for all the authors we work with to set this, set this process up. All righty. We're going to choose a launch date at least six to eight weeks out. So we've got all these pieces together now. We've got our author website. We've got our email list set up. We've got our, our free preview set up. We're putting that page into the book. Um, we're going to be ready to, to hit publish on the book. But before we do, we're going to choose our launch date. We want it to be something like six to eight weeks out because we need just a little bit of time. We're going to have to order books, uh, receive those books, check and make sure that it's printing well, everything looks the way that it should. If we need to make any adjustments, we have a little bit of time to make those adjustments. And now we can confidently go out to our people, our friends, our colleagues, our family members, and let them know, hey, my book is launching in a couple of months. Would you like to be a part of the book launch team? I'll give you a free advanced review copy, and I would love for you to, um, you know, be able to leave a review on the book when it launches. And so we need something like 20 to 100 people who will read the book in advance and leave a review and share the book during book launch. Now, if you are a little bit further along in your journey and you already have, let's say, an email list or social media following that's larger than that, then you want to think about two audiences here. You're going to have one audience that is your book launch team. They have said yes. They are all excited about your book launch. They're going to receive the advanced copy. And then there are other people who are interested, but they're not going to sign up for the whole book launch team thing. They're like, let me know. <laughs> let me know when it launches. And, uh, and, and they're not as engaged. They're not as involved, right? And so you'll want to create two sort of sets of messaging. If you're sending out emails, one set of emails is going to go to your book launch team. You're going to be sending them the PDF preview. You're going to be reminding them of the launch. You're going to ask them to leave a review. You're going to be, you know, thanking them for their reviews. Whereas your general team, they're not as engaged. They're not as involved. You can just let them know when the book is actually launching. That's all they care about. <laughs> they're like, when is there a buy button? Okay, perfect. <laughs> you know, let them know kind of just, they only need a heads up, like maybe the day before, or even just the day of book launch. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about why I uh, don't typically recommend a pre-order strategy. I hope we might be able to get to that today. So um, for folks who, in fact, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, I, for the pre-launch of a book, there is a uh, sort of long-standing workflow from traditional publishing, which is let's go out and market the book for six months and pre-order, sell pre-order copies of the book for months before the book actually launches. And the reason that that works for traditionally published books is because publishers have a relationship with bookstores. Actually, publishers via distributors have a relationship with bookstores where um, the bookstore can pre-sell a book, but they actually hold that order until launch date. So the publisher sends out the author and says, go and pre-sell as many books as you can. So the author's like, great, I'm going to, I'll go pre-sell, you know, 500 books in this month and maybe a few hundred more books in this month. And, you know, by the time I'm, I'm out pre-selling books for six months, 
maybe I've sold 5,000 copies or 6,000 copies or 10,000 copies, right? All of those sales are held by the bookstore. They're not, they're not, um, they're not considered sales yet. All of them hold until the predetermined launch date. And so then you have six months of sales that all drop on the same day. So for the purposes of hitting a bestsellers list, all of those sales occur occurred on the same day, in the same week. And so you can then have a shot at hitting the bestsellers list is the game. The problem is Barnes and Noble is happy to play that game. Local bookstores are happy to play that game. Amazon does not like to play that game. Amazon does not play that game. <laughs> so if a book is pre-ordered through Amazon, the sale happens the day of the pre-order. So you could spend six months getting pre-orders, but you're diluting the launch. You're stringing all those, those sales out over six months. What is more helpful for the purposes of, of um, hitting these bestseller lists is to try to concentrate as many sales as you can in a short time frame. Traditional publishers have a bit of a back door, <laughs> right? Because they can actually sell for six months and then all of those sales drop in at one time. Whereas if we are selling through Amazon, what we're going to actually try to do is tell as many people as possible, you know, who want to know about the book, okay, the book is coming, get on the book launch team, read an advanced review copy. And then in this launch window, in these five days, please download the book or buy the book in these five days and leave a review if you've been on the book launch team. So then instead of the pre-order game, which is what we would have played with traditional publishing, when we are independently published, when we're self-published, instead we're playing the book launch game. We're going to try to get as many people as possible onto a book launch team those folks are going to get an advanced review copy and they're going to agree to leave a review on the book when it's launching. And so I recommend having a page that looks something like this. Um, and you can reword this however you want, but something like this, where it's like, you know, want to be the first to know when the book launches book title will be coming soon and you can sign up here to be the first to know about the book launch give them some interesting tidbits like what type of book this is the characters the plot types some intriguing things um plus we'll be giving out special bonuses that can be you know a behind the scenes talk with the author that can be um you know the historical notes that you gathered that could be additional stories that could be an event with the author, like a live, an, a, you know, an invitation to a live event, whatever sounds fun, right? Just something fun sprinkled in there. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a free copy of a previous book that you published. And so you're trying to get people to provide their name and email address and sign up for the book launch team. So the more people we can gather on this book launch team, the more people we can, you know, have to review the book when the book comes out. You can also have an about the author and then, um, you know, priority notification list or wait list or something like that when, when the book comes out. So this is what I recommend if you're itching <laughs> to do something pre-launch, this is what I recommend is get people onto your book launch team. And if you don't want to build a website for it, just ask people, go through, you know, scan through your contacts, your role, your digital Rolodex, start messaging people, start calling people, start sending email addresses. And you just want to have a list of people who said, yes, I want to be a part of your book launch team so that eight weeks from now or, or, or two months from now, approximately when the book is launching, you've got people who are ready to leave reviews and, um, and spread the word. Okay. So that's, we're choosing our launch date in advance. We're getting our book launch team together. And then for anyone else who doesn't want to be a part of the book launch team, we're just going to tell them when the book launches, because all they want is to be able to go to Amazon and click, you know, 
the download button. <laughs> like that's what they want. They don't want all the, you know, you, you can tease a little bit here and there. You can show them the book covers that's coming together. You can show them the table of contents or the dedication or talk a little bit about the writing process, things like that. Um, but, you know, they're not going to, they're going to be most motivated by the immediacy. The book is available now. So tomorrow we're going to go a little bit deeper into um, the Amazon optimized launch. I guess what I had done is just open up this, didn't I? So we've got everything that's ready to hit publish. We've got um, our email list set up and our freebie set up. Uh, we are already thinking about our book launch team and um, and maybe at least considering if I'm not already on social media, should I go ahead and set up a Facebook profile, an Instagram profile, a TikTok profile, that sort of thing. What we want to talk about tomorrow is um, all the things that are going to go into that five-day window that I was sort of beginning to allude to. So when we when we are trying to get everyone to take action in a five day window. And we do that so that we can demonstrate to the Amazon algorithm, this book is hot, right? Something exciting is happening with this book. <laughs> it's got suddenly a lot of downloads and sales. It's hitting number one in categories. And so the Amazon algorithm is crawling through the book. It's a brand new book. Amazon's like, oh, interesting things are happening. People are leaving reviews on this book. Let's show the book more widely. How do we engineer a five-day process that maximizes what we can get a, a visibility on that launch. And our KPIs that we're going to look at, our key performance indicators that we're going to look at are downloads and sales in a five-day period. Number ones in categories in a five-day period. We started that conversation with Publisher Rocket, right? Uh, and reviews, the number of reviews we can get in a five-day period. Those three things, how do we engineer an experience where we're popping, we're, we're getting those three KPIs um, as, as dialed in as we possibly can in a five-day period. So we're going to look at A-plus content, setting up an ebook promotion, some places that we like to go to for, for additional promotional lists, and um, and how to get these number one rankings, downloads and sales and reviews in the launch. So I see some questions that have come through. I was trying not to, I know I, ha I have been taking us like all the way up to the hours. So I was trying to leave just a little bit of room for questions. So if you're in the Zoom room with us and you've got questions, uh, now is a great time to kind of pop them in. And I see some that had come in earlier. So Providence says, how to clean a mess up. <laughs> Right. We're all learning all the time um, and, and our, our best practices continue to evolve. So I would say there's no mess up. Just how do we optimize? Right. What if you published a few short stories and didn't do all of this that we're talking about right now? Still more stories to publish. How do we start over or work going forward? So a couple of things, Providence. Um, one, go ahead and get your one page author website up. Look at MailerLite as an option for an email service provider. Start to get those technical pieces put together because it does take just a hot minute to figure out all those, all those pieces. Then if you have the rights to any previous books, you can edit those files. You can edit the ebook files and you can edit the print book files. It will not affect any books that have already been purchased, but Anyone who purchases or downloads your book going forward, they'll have the new files. So you can add these sorts of things in to existing books. Just change the files, re-upload them into the same book page. So um, let me show you this sort of technically speaking. So if I, uh, I'm never logged into the right account. I'm not, hold on, let me log into the right account. <laughs> I'm always switching between Amazon accounts. Let me go to mine real quick. Here we go. All right. Now I can share. Um, so this is my book. And uh, I have actually updated my files. Y'all may have. I don't think I have an original. Oh, yeah, I do. Right here. 
So if you have this one, this is the original of my book and I updated the cover and some pieces of the interior. Um, and so I just re-uploaded them into this exact same area. And so you can actually um, edit ebook content right here and you can edit the paperback content and hardback if you have the hardback through KDP as well. So you're just uploading new files into them and you can embed your reader magnets right into the new files. And then for any previous books, you know, what we were talking about yesterday with the keywords and the categories, you want to make sure that they have, in fact, I can screen share real quick. Uh, you want to make sure that they have updated keywords and categories, especially in the ebook. Oh no, I don't have my password. Yes, I do. Okay, thank goodness. I don't remember any passwords ever. I don't know what I would do without my computer remembering passwords for me. This is inside KDP. Um, you just want to make sure that you've got your seven keywords and your three categories selected um, strategically for any previously published books. And then you can actually run the same sort of launch that I'm going to walk you through tomorrow. You can run it again on a previously published book. Uh, I, As a caveat, it always works better on a new book. Just because the way the algorithm's set up, it's set up to uh, prioritize new things on the platform, new products, new books on the on the platform. So for eBooks in particular, there's about a 30 day window where the Amazon algorithm is crawling through the book and trying to decide who to show it to and um, what categories to show it most widely and that sort of thing. Um, it can still work on previously published books. You just, it takes a little bit more oomph underneath the book. So you might have to get, you know, you might have to pay for some additional promotion to some different reader lists or, um, you know, try to get in front of some uh, audiences on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or something like that. Like get some additional eyeballs to the book plus the keywords and the categories and the, the ebook promotion that we're gonna talk through tomorrow. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, Margaret's like, I changed passwords. I can't remember them. <laughs> yep. Uh, Jan says, will Barnes & Noble and other stores accept KDP's ISBNs? Uh, no. <laughs> KDP technically uses what's called an ASIN, A-S-I-N. That is Amazon's unique identifier for the Amazon store. Does not work for any other store. Now, luckily, Amazon's a really big store. <laughs> so Amazon, you know, can sell ebooks and paperbacks and hardbacks all over the world. So for Amazon's store, it gives out free ASINs. I have not seen any negative repercussions for using Amazon's free ASINs. The natural consequence is that no other store cares about Amazon's ASIN, right? Other stores... Barnes & Noble, et cetera, is going to want an ISBN, and that is through Bowker, B-O-W-K-E-R. They have the monopoly on ISBNs. And so, yes, Barnes & Nobles and other stores will want an ISBN. Um, you can, we talked about this yesterday, you can upload everything to Amazon first, and then you can get your ISBNs and upload things to Ingram Spark is the second one. So those are those are the main two. Amazon an Ingram Spark. An Ingram Spark will automatically list your book on barnesandnoble.com. So your paperback and your hardback will list automatically onto barnesandnoble.com and a bunch of others. So when you see like a, a book publisher or whatever say, we distribute to thousands and thousands and thousands of different retail locations, I can pretty much promise you what they actually do is publish on Ingram Spark and click the distribute button. <laughs> and then it is listed on all of these different places. It's listed on Barnes and Noble and whatever, whatever, you know, random retail location sites. Um, but, but what they are not telling you is that just because it exists on barnesandnoble.com does not mean that any reader knows to go and buy it. It's like, if my book exists on barnesandnoble.com, does it get sold? No, <laughs> no, because no one knows about it, right? And that's the major problem with 
Barnes and Noble and any other bookstore is there's almost no discoverability, right? Discoverability used to look like people walk into the store and they see the book on the end cap or on the table or whatever. So you used to just pay for your book to be on the end cap or in a middle table or have a you know premium location so that it could get discovered. People don't walk into Barnes and Noble anymore, right? So yeah, it can be listed on barnesandnoble.com, but who's going to go find it? How would they know about it? That's the major negative side to all of these other bookstores is just discoverability, getting your getting readers to know that your book exists in these bookstores, even in brick and mortar. Like, how do you know when someone walks through the front doors of a bookstore, you can't possibly control that they're going to go to a certain shelf and see your book and pick it up and look at it. Like your book is one book of the tens of thousands of books in that bookstore you're just hoping and praying <laughs> that someone knows about it or stumbles upon it. You know, like that's discoverability in the classic book world is hoping and praying and maybe paying to put it on a central table. <laughs> Amazon, the benefit of Amazon. Now, Amazon's a huge bookstore. I mean, it has every book <laughs> pretty much that you could possibly imagine. So it has a much larger inventory. It has millions and millions of books. and it has a discoverability mechanism. It allows readers to browse, to search the bookstore like we talked about yesterday, right? It allows people to go to the Amazon bookstore and say, I'm looking for, you know, a, uh, I forgot what we used yesterday, adventure, um, psychological, woo. Interesting. Thriller. I can type this in and Amazon can um, serve me suggestions. This is discoverability, right? We can actually hack this with the keywords that we choose, the titles and the subtitles and the descriptions that we choose, right? And so we can um, help to make sure that Amazon shows our book to specific keyword searches. And then the other method of discoverability is browse. So Amazon actually, oh, I didn't click into a book. I clicked into a series by accident. Amazon is loading. I feel like I did something wrong. Hold on. Let's just go to a category real quick. Uh, Amazon shows products related to this item. These are based on categories. So that's why we were talking so much about categories yesterday was if you can get number one in a very small or niche category, it increases the likelihood that Amazon is going to show your book in the browsing bars of similarly categorized books. And um, it will actually show your book sort of up the chain into the wider and wider, the more competitive categories once you hit number one in a very small category. So this is what discoverability looks like on Amazon. This is why Amazon has been powerful for independent authors in a way that Barnes and Noble has not remained relevant for independent authors because it's so much dang work to get people to walk into a bookstore and pick up our book in particular, right? And so um, that's that's where we end up getting into these geeky strategies around keywords and categories and setting up these promotions to get our downloads and sales, hit our number ones in categories and, and get reviews on our books to, to optimize that discoverability. Uh, if we have a KDP ASIN, should we then get a separate ISBN uh, for the same books in order to go through income? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we do. So, you know, we put onto Amazon, we just use the KDP ASIN, the automatic number that Amazon gives us for that store. And then once that's all set up, 
we get the ISBNs or maybe we already have the ISBNs. We, <laughs> we select the ISBN that we're going to use and, um, and put it into Ingram Spark with that ISBN. Yep. Okay. Amazing. I hope this has been helpful. Tomorrow, let me give you a quick preview of our next session. We are going to go into, um, now that we have everything all ready and loaded to hit publish, um, we're going to talk about what, what will happen when you hit publish. So what are all the dominoes you're going to set up to fall kind of as soon as you hit publish. And so we're going to look at an Amazon, Amazon optimized launch promotion. We're going to talk about a plus content, which has become increasingly important over the last year, especially, um, setting up what we call an ebook promotion and why we focus on the ebook at first. Now, everything will be available. People can buy the ebook or the paperback or the hardback. You can set up the audiobook too, if that's part of your plan. Um, but why we're focusing on the ebook for this first promotion, uh, some places where we get some good um, lists of readers to let them know about these promotions, and then um, how we're tracking our number one rankings, reviews, and things like that. You'll notice I kind of uh, blew over these tools, Book Brush, Canva, Buffer, Tailwind. So those are to set up social media posts, visual images, quote cards, things like that. We'll talk about those as well, because those are some dominoes that you're going to set up to fall <laughs> during this, this five-day promotion. And then on Friday, we'll talk about sort of long-term marketing and some additional, once you're, once you have that, in, that first big push out the gate, um, what are some of these long-term marketing things uh, look like? And the good news is anything you do to market the book you're going to bring people, yes, to the book, and they will see at the end of the book the opportunity to sign up for your email newsletter, your email list, and now you're really growing your author platform. So we're setting up this whole ecosystem very strategically. If this is your jam and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I finally found people who talk about <laughs> the whole ecosystem as an author, we do currently have enrollment open for our book coaching and mentorship program. Um, it is a year long um, coaching and mentorship relationship with us where we are helping you to actually write, publish set up all these platform pieces and market your book. We do, it's a group program in the sense that there are other authors and writers going through this program at the same time as you. And there are one-on-one -on -one pieces, meaning you have a book coach. We are doing your market research. We're looking at your keywords, your categories. We're designing your cover. We're doing your interior. We are setting up your website and your email list and um, your promotion for your ebook, all of that. Um, a year is a roomy, comfortable amount of time to do that in. And if you want to go faster, we can go as fast as you want to go, right? Um, but enrollment is open right now. And so I would encourage you to go to paperavenbooks.com slash BC. Well, that's a long link. I need to find it. There's a, the, the application itself is paperravenbooks.com slash go, which is a much easier link to remember. Paperravenbooks.com slash go. Um, we ask for a refundable application fee. It's a hundred bucks. If we are not a fit, I just refund your hundred bucks really fast, but it makes sure that we are both um, ready for the conversation and uh, the details on the fiction program are actually linked right here as well. So you can take a look at all of those deliverables in the manuscript, the book, the plan, um, all those bullet points about what we're going to cover and some bonuses that we've got going on right now. And um, then you can click to apply and get on the phone with us. So that's happening right now. If this is your kind of conversation and you want to walk through this whole process with us over the course of about a year, um, but many times we get it done in closer to eight or nine months, something like that, then uh, go ahead and check out applying so that we can talk to you about it. Okay. Right now we're looking, we are talking about fiction because of NaNoWriMo. We have a custom project or a custom um, 
plan, a custom program <laughs> for nonfiction and memoir as well. Uh, so we do have program a program for nonfiction and memoir. And so if you want to talk about one of those types of books, then feel free to go ahead and apply. Uh, right now we're talking about fiction because NaNoWriMo is around the corner and we've been talking about novels and series and that sort of thing. Um, but yes, uh, if you go to uh paperravenbooks.com slash go you'll see we've got nonfiction right here and fiction right here and then memoir has its own uh curriculum as well so hopefully that helps all right i'll see you back same time same place tomorrow to go into that amazon launch i'll see you guys there bye